my recording here, so anything could happen. Uh, <laughs> you want to start us off? Should I start us off? Should we try to do it in unison? Like, <laughs> hey, oh everybody. No, too much. <laughs> Hey, y'all. Welcome to Philly Cam's 2022 member recognition special. Uh, my name is Roland. I'm here with Gabe. We work for Philly Cam and we uh, love hanging out with members. That's a big part of what we do uh, every day. And so we've invited folks who've been doing lots of cool stuff from the past year on for this special. We're flying by the seat of our pants a little bit here, getting clips together. It's just going to be a good old time uh, just hanging out, chatting about all things Philly Cam. Uh, but it's part of a, a larger effort here with our People Powered Media Fest. And we've even got a spiel uh, whipped up courtesy of hardworking Sergio Galliano, uh, <laughs> who's making this all happen at Philly Cam and giving us the talking points. I think you've got them, right, Gabe? We can- I do. Yeah. Let's, Let's do it. it. Talking points away, <laughs> yeah. This program is a part of Philly Cam's People Power Media Fest, which is our month long celebration of community media and you. This year, we are bringing attention to how our members and neighbors throughout Philadelphia are building community power. Be sure to catch conversations, workshops, and special programming like this that represent local stories and legacies of activism that continue to impact our lives from our neighborhoods to public policy. Tune in to be a part of the Fest on Cable radio and online and for more information you can always visit ppmfest.org hello moscow Welcome moscow to the thought show. you did such a good job he had to come by and just <laughs> fantastic all right well we've got some um members here maybe we should just bring everybody on right let's let's make this a party yeah, this is and the member recognition event welcome yeah. We're going to add everybody here. Thanks so much for joining us, y'all. I think maybe we should just start with some introductions. Yeah, so tell us it. a little bit about yourself and and uh, your connection with Philly Cam. And then we got all sorts of questions and stuff we're going to throw your way and maybe play a few clips and all that fun stuff. But um, let's see. Maybe we can just start uh, with Tony J. Uh, my name is Tony J. I'm almost 70 years old. I've been with um, Philly Cam for over five years. I have a show called The Seven Figure Hustle on radio and television. Hey everybody, I'm Karen Walker. I'm the executive producer and host of Diamond in the Rough. Uh, I've been a member of Philly Cam since 2014. Yeah, I think I can trump everybody on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it back to 2010, all right? So, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I, I, I just actually celebrated my 12 year anniversary here in Philadelphia. So I got here thanks to Philly Cam. Um, yeah, so it was, um, it's great uh, to be here, see, see all you all. I am currently the uh, director of um, Karen Walker's program, uh, Diamond in the Rough, and um, also a producer um, for the Philadelphia Jazz Project. And uh, then I also have another project that is coming up in the, in the, in the works, um, which is a, a the Philadelphia Community Media Oral History Project, which I'm working with a few members on here. Uh, that's a part of my uh, dissertation research. Hey everyone, I'm Shamika Sawyer. I'm the founder of the Five Shorts Project. I'm also a producer on Philly Cam Station. And like Karen, I've been a member since 2014 as well. Hi, I'm Earl Weeks. Um, I've been with Philly Cam since about 2012. Um, I worked on a bunch of different shows um, the first being uh, Serena Lomax's Talking the Walk and uh, Tony Bennett, The Tony Bennett Show. Right now I'm working with uh, Relax with Reiki and The Gathering Place. Hey, everybody. My name is Ricky Clover. I've been with Philly Cam since 2016. I'm the creator of the multi-award-winning um, animated series, Marky. I'm working on the third episode marky rock the house i was just on karen walker's um diamond in the rough as a guest and my show will be completed by the end of november and it will be shown on philly cam january 2023 so i'm, I'm extremely excited um about everything yeah congratulations it's been quite a run for the marky series and we'll, we'll be able to get into a uh, uh, marky in a little bit more detail here tonight too yes super excited for it. we have a couple members too who couldn't uh join us for the live um whatever this is that we're doing uh that gabe and i have 
pulled, tried to pull together at the last minute here, um, but did submit clips for us. Um, so uh, we've got one from Joe Luciano. Uh, let's take a look. Well, how do, do I find out about Billy Cam? Well, find out one person showed me the block, the block around that in Philly that it was a Philly Cam studio that took place that I'd never seen before. And since that, I've been walking in the, in the building and see what's it about. And then I find out they had a lot of stuff to do on, on the recordings, like TV Studio Crew, Express Studio, Radio, Connect With People. And a lot of stuff, I have so much fun. And I got the chance to meet each other and connect and social media posts and platforms and everything I did. What projects I have worked on, well, the show I've been working on on the Zoom platform is Connecting During Crisis. I worked 25 episodes so far. We're doing a lot of good topics. And right now it's getting better and better. I've been doing it on YouTube, on Philly Cam shows. What, what I have learned at Philly Cam, um, I've learned a lot. Like how to bring forth, get strong. Um, giving opportunities to people to build build people, learn how to use a TriCaster, learn how to work audio, camera. I've made a lot of decorations in the studio, and I've um, been doing a lot of like do a lot of editing on the shows. I've been producing, directing. Ever since I've been doing it a lot. And what does Philly Cam mean to me? Well, Philly Cam. It's always the best place to be with. It many means to me be, be curious of each other, to understand each other, and be bold to each other. Remember, you are the good spot. Be with you. Remember, this is this is a place to be. And as somebody that's gotten to be on Joe's show, Connecting with Crisis, it's super cool. He comes up with all these specific questions every time, and they're really fun. We talked a lot uh, on the show I was on just about you know, uh, where would you go if you could have a vacation anywhere, which was uh, super fun, you know, especially when you've been stuck inside uh, for as long as we had at that point. I was just like, it was great to get to chat about anywhere to go. Um, and uh, speaking of travel, um, Doug Chrisman, who teaches our StreamYard class um, and has been involved in all sorts of member productions, is actually in Norway at the moment, um, but managed to get just enough internet to get on StreamYard to record a little something for us. Let's take a look at that. Good afternoon. This is Doug Chrisman uh, coming to you from uh, above the Arctic Circle, uh, above uh, Norway, uh, and even above an island called um, Svalbard, Svalbard that uh, has one of the uh, towns that is the furthest most town in um, the world. So I just thought I would use StreamYard to um, share with you, um, you know, our ability to communicate with each other even though we're long distances away. I hope all of you are doing well back in Philadelphia and I look forward to uh, getting to you on the next connection. In the meantime, uh, enjoy. Take care. Bye-bye. Pretty cool. So perfect for his show too. That's right. Yes. It's really good to hear like from folks who weren't able to, to come to our last minute requests. We are hoping to have um, more opportunities for people to share their Philly cam experiences from video clips that we'll put on YouTube to um, they could just write us letters. So if you're a member watching this and you want to share your story about your Philly cam journey, please let us know. Um, but I wanted to kind of hear, like we talked about like where you all like started with Philly cam. And so I want to hear more about what you're doing now, like what you're working on currently. And so I'm going to pop it over to uh, Shamika. Could you tell us a bit about what you're working on these days? Yeah, sure. So um, these days I'm getting back into filmmaking, um, collaborating with other filmmakers here in Philadelphia and creating some content. Like I have a ton of stuff <laughs> to you know, submit to a uh, Philly cam. I know I slacked off because of the pandemic, but now things are starting to move back into somewhat normal. So I'll be sending some stuff over very soon. But yeah, I'm just getting back into the game again, just getting back out there and making more films. 
Absolutely. And we always love to see what you create and what you help other people create um, because you are always, you know, the support system for, for new filmmakers. And so it's kind of nice to see like you were making these things. You started here at Philly Cam and now you're like giving back. <laughs> so that building community power is super relevant here. Um, and we do actually have a clip from your work that we can share as well. Right, Roland? We sure do. Uh, this is just a little peek of Get Ready With Me, which uh, blew my mind when I saw it. It was just so, so perfectly executed on every level. Uh, so you should go out and watch the whole thing. We're just going to show a little clip here. Uh, but uh, you can, I believe, find it on YouTube. Uh, is that right, Shamika? Yep. Um, get Ready With Me. Let's take a look. <laughs> Yesterday, oh my god, it was so crazy, right? Anyway, yeah, so, <laughs> so cut it off right there where it gets real intense, but definitely uh, check it out. And um, yeah, I was so impressed with just from the graphics to the pacing to the sound design. I mean, it just felt very meticulously crafted on a number of levels. Uh, and I'm just curious, Shamika, how how did that project come together, and and what did it take to kind of pull off all those components of it? Oh, wow. Um, it was very fun to do, but I learned a lot about creating a short horror film. And I was just like, you know, I thought it was going to be easy, but it was not. Um, <laughs> so a group of us uh, got together and we created like uh, short films together, short horror films together. And our collective was called Trending. And so basically our stories were based on like social media as being the villain. So um, for my character, you know, she she was dealing with um, the the true identity of herself. So she's an influencer. And as we know, sometimes on social media, we don't show who our true selves are. Um, but she ends up getting haunted by the fact that she's not being authentic. So I won't give too much away about it. Um, but it was a great experience, a great learning experience, um, I must say. Like, we shot that over the course of two days. And yeah, I mean, for the editing and, and the sound design, thank you, Roland, for that, because um, <laughs> <laughs> I was struggling through that, trying to figure out like, how can I make this like more intense? And so I did my best and um, I'm, I'm proud of what came out of it. So yeah, thank you for, for sharing a piece of it. Yeah, and if you wanna learn more about Get ready with me. Uh, I have an interview with Shamika on my show. So a little plug there, Ghouls Next Door. Check it out. And you can hear all about the making of and just hear me geeking out, honestly, <laughs> about anything horror and just how amazingly talented Shamika right. is. Um, and speaking of passion projects that have been uh, taken off, I wanted to talk to Philly Cam's resident animator expert, Ricky Clover, next. Uh, so Ricky, uh, you talked a little bit in your intro uh, at the top about uh, Marky, which now has three editions, but um, I wanted to just give you a chance to kind of break down a little bit more what it's been like creating these projects. So I've gotten to see it from, you know, just how much time you've spent at Philly Cam, but I'm sure not everybody knows just how much goes into uh, working on a project like this. Basically, when you're a solo animation team, you're doing the work of a whole animation studio as a single person. So yeah, what's what's that been like? Um, it's been a dream come true. I mean, I had this concept since I was in middle school. Now I'm 44 years old. So, you know, I had this concept since, you know, inception since the 90s. So 
Um, it's been a dream. I work on this thing every day. I work on it, of course, in Philly Cam, and I also work on it at home with my laptop, and even at work when I'm on my break. So it's I don't I look at it as beyond the past project. I look at it with more as a lifestyle because I work, I eat and breathe and and just sleep, just um, dealing with this market thing. So. Awesome. And can you tell our viewers a little bit about what Marky is about? Um, well, it's a period piece, so it takes place in the early 90s. It's about a kid, Marky. His real name is Marky Sharper Jr. Um, and he's stuck with a bad haircut um, in his new middle school he's going to. So he has to uh, basically deal with being bullied and everything. And, and every episode, it's just him going through different adventures. Really cool little uh, nostalgia flashback there too for anybody you know, remembers playing in the arcade as well. It's so well put together. Um, and it's speaking always of, so cool to see it, honestly. Yeah, oh, definitely. <laughs> All the work that went into that, and like the sound design is super on point. And uh, you know, I, I think all Philly Cam staff can attest to how frequently <laughs> Ricky is in there working really hard on that. So amazing work as all. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely amazing, Ricky. And you got a chance uh, not only to talk about the uh, work you've been doing, but actually like fire up After Effects and demonstrate it as part of being interviewed on Karen's show, which is so cool because we got Karen and Antoine here who were part of that episode. Um, so that's kind of a perfect segue here. Um, Karen, maybe we can talk to you a little bit about um, how Diamond in the Rough came together. Thank you, uh, Rowan. Initially, the concept for the show was really born as a result of me having uh, gatherings in my home many years ago. I would invite friends and family over, mainly women, uh, to come and talk about uh, anything under the sun, life, religion, uh, uh, politics, men, because we were all <laughs> women. And um, I stumbled across Philly Cam uh, looking for a venue for my daughter's sweet 16th birthday party. And um, just so happened that she was studying uh, photography. And um, fast forward a number of years after her, her internship with Philly Cam, um, I then became a member and decided to overcome my fear of public speaking and develop a production that I would host um, a women's gathering, and then also help host a, a men's forum. Um, that component uh, was also introduced um, later on um, that would feature uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, artists, performers, um, anyone that I really had an interest in. Um, uh, Antoine has been an integral part in helping me um, develop this entire program. So very proud of what we've done thus far. Fantastic. Well, we can pop over to uh, actually Antoine. So <laughs> your role at Philly Cam has transformed over time, right? Being there from 2010, kicking off Philly Cam and being this integral part of how we function and, and live now to um, sadly leaving us, but not too far uh, and returning as the director of Diamond in the Rough. So can you tell us about your your journey and and what it feels like to, to be back in, in, in this specific role? Yeah, it's um it's been great to still um you know to to be connected um you know and but in a different way. Uh I 
started as the membership and outreach director um, in the position I worked in for eight years and then transitioned into grad school, um, where I'm now uh, pursuing my PhD at Annenberg School for Communication. But um, it, it's it's the one thing that absolutely, you know, I, I tell everyone, I underscore in, you know, my writing, you know, I carry it in my heart is still being connected to this community is 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 a must for me. It keeps me grounded, you know. Um, it's not just research for me. Like this is, <laughs> you know, uh, community media is I, what, like Ricky said, you know, it's a lifestyle. It's, it's a way of life. It's a way of, of being. It's culture, you know, for me. And um, and I really just enjoy uh, just just being in community with with all you all here and, and our members who are on on the program right now. And um, yeah, and it's it's great to to have my you know, <laughs> you know, influence helping out and support in many ways that I can, you know, uh, with Karen's program and just hearing people, hearing people's stories. That's what I just, I, I love too. It's the storytelling part about it. So, and as Roland said, it was great to just hear Ricky's story. You know, I've mm -hmm. seen Ricky, as we all say, you know, Ricky's all, Ricky's there every day, just about whenever <laughs> y'all open, or you can't be open and Ricky can get in, Ricky gonna be there, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but you know, but all the time, it's like, I just, I still have, I fully haven't heard um, Ricky's story, you know, and I got to hear more and more of that on um, the show. Tony J, we talked quite a bit, or oh, weeks, you know, just everyone, you know, Shamika, I see your story on, on social media. So, um, but it's, it's great to, um, it, it's just, I really, really love hearing uh, folks stories and, uh, you know, anything I can do to, to, to help um, us continue to uplift um, our narratives. Like that's what it's all about. What I think is really amazing about uh, the, it, all the ones of you who've, who've attended here um, are the different roles that you often play. Um, even thinking like back to Joe Luciano, who was able to submit that video is like, he was always working on crew and then was able to produce his own program. Right. And there's, it, there's so much of this culture where we like hop in, we help others and then they help us. And uh, we always value when there's members who are, are turning up and, and supporting all these different producers on very different shows too, uh, and giving that same energy and that same dedication to each one of them. And so uh, for you, Earl, you are there, right? You are around, you are the support system. When people ask me like, hey, I need help. <laughs> Who's available to help? You're one of the first names that comes up for me where I'm just like, hey, have you asked Earl, is he around? Um, and you've worked on so many different programs and focusing on different things. Um, could you tell us a bit about uh, your experience experiences on these different programs and uh, what it's like working on like the gathering place. I know that's a, a big focus of yours right now, um, as well as uh, Relax with Reiki. Okay, so um, working on the programs, the, well, I remember taking a studio class and a friend of mine was supposed to get interviewed by Zarina Lomax on um, Talking the Walk and I volunteered to help. So she invited me to the studio to watch and uh, they were short people. She's like, Mr. Earl, you got to work. Get on camera three. So um, before I finished the studio class, I had uh, about six or eight recordings with her. And uh, after that, uh, working with Tony Bennett. And uh, later on, uh, ended up working with uh, jazz. Um, oh, wow. Uh, Khadija Renee with her jazz show. And uh, right now she's now doing uh, Relax with Reiki. And, um, you know, I kind of relate to that show. If people don't know, it's about um, a system that comes from Japan that's about um, like a Zen type system that helps you relax your body and, and things like that. And since I've been in Japan for four years and a couple of trips, um, it, I really know about that stuff, so it's nice working on this show. Um, the Gathering Place is a show with uh, Dion McCray. It's about creative people coming together and uh, just getting interviewed, um, networking, and talking about um, different things, say, in the entertainment industry or whatever they're doing. That's amazing. It's, and also so diverse. Also, when you were telling your story about Zarina, I was like, <laughs> that is so Zarina. <laughs> I was like a response, like, get up there, get to work, get it done. Um, and, and still, like, it was so fun, you know, uh, working on any of her productions or seeing, like, the energy. Um, I can see how 
working on a production like hers would kind of like spur you to want to work on everything because <laughs> you're like well if, if productions are like this which um we have some really amazing and fun uh productions that happen all the time and you know the studios are kicking back up uh and so it was just good to hear like those little anecdotes and i hope you know we get to hear some more from the rest of you it always impressed me too. Zarina show. I'd walk by the window and people would just be like in tears. I mean, she's the kind of host who gets <laughs> yes. people to, it all gets put out on the table during her show, but it makes it super, super impactful. Um, like, you know, just really, uh, I think adds a lot to it that you can have a space to talk like that. We had another member, Derek Rivers, uh, who couldn't join us today, um, but uh, he's been working really hard on a sci-fi epic. He's written it, working on directing, producing the effects. Uh, and so he's really uh, kind of leveraging Philly Cam to the hilt in all the best ways, uh, you know, through the community and the other members, but also through the space, through the technology um, to try to get this piece together. Um, and it's been cool to be a part of. So I wanted to play a little clip. So uh, here we go. Imagine the universe as you know it is about to be destroyed. And only you can save it. Hi. I'm Derek Rivers. What I just described to you is the premise of the TV series I've created called Walker of the Universe. It's cool to hear you know i think part of what uh makes philly cam so cool is that you can have these paths where you start doing one thing and then you do another thing so you maybe you help on one show but then you start your own show or you you know you are the on-screen talent and you're like I, maybe i should learn how to edit maybe i maybe i want to learn how to do the camera or something and so there's all these different ways to connect with what's going on at philly cam uh tony jay i know for you you were producing on a lot of shows you know, behind the camera and then made that switch to being in front of the camera, uh, which is a huge deal. And, and you know, you put a lot of work and a lot of thought into your show. And uh, I'm curious, um, how does it feel now thinking about where Seven Figure Hustle is at? Well, um, I always had a problem with finances. And that's why I started the show. And that's why my show was raw. Um, since then, I've, I've gone to I've taken workshops. I've learned how to be a, a, a financial coach. I started with Philly Cam with um, We Talk Weekly, Charles Gregory. I got up in, on Philly Cam, uh, involved with Philly Cam from a friend of mine, Denise Price. And she had paid for a class and couldn't take it and asked me would I produce her show. And I'm like, I don't know how to produce nothing. So what, what's that, you know? So anyway, long story short, I went and I took the course for her instead of her, and I've been hooked ever since. And I was really in a, a really deep place at the time when I was going to Philly Cam. That's why she said, you know, get up off that woe is me and go take the class. I'm like, okay, what the heck? So I did. And when I went down there, I was just amazed at what was the possibilities. And I had a mini stroke a while back and you know, of course, the doctor said, you know, you can't do this and that and that. Uh, okay. Philly cam going back with the people, all the help, all the encouragement. Um, Karen, I've been working with her. I roll in. I call you all the time. Gabe. Hey, Gabe. So, and, um, well, Earl was one, my first show, which was my best show, I think ever. I found that I really love producing. My favorite position basically is, is the floor manager. I like to make sure your hair is right and, and the mic is not sticking the wrong way. And everybody said that's like, you know, one of the lower 
positions, and but that's my favorite position. I don't like being in front of the camera. And so with, with that being said, the seven figure hustle came about because I didn't handle finances. I lost home, I lost car, and my kids was even um, separated from me behind not understanding finances. So the show has been able to help me help other people to see what the basics are and how financial literacy is so important, how financial literacy um, involved with crime and, 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 and you know, everything that's going on at the city of Philadelphia is a lot of because a lot of people don't know the financial literacy. So I think it's so important. And Philly Cam was a platform that allowed me to do what I would never, ever imagine doing. And, you know, you guys are just amazing. You know, so. And I appreciate everyone. <laughs> I, I've really appreciated getting to see, uh, you know, the uh, how your show has grown, uh, the you know the the different places you've taken it, uh, and then just yeah, all the knowledge. You know, there are shows where I've just TD'd for you behind the scenes, and I'm missing my cues, like leaving it on the wrong person because I'm writing so many notes there. You know, you have these these folks on, you know, they're talking about how to get your finances in order. And a lot of it's like real common sense stuff, but it's like you say, it's amazing how much we don't think about that stuff because it's not. It's not like math or science in school, even though it really should be. And so, yeah, I'm I'm there just taking as many notes as I can. I'm, you know, texting my partner about like, what, what if we sh we should look into this? We should. So, you know, I've just appreciated uh, your dedication to it, how much you put into it, and to just keep it going. Um, you know, even in the face of you know the pandemic and the technical uh, issues and making it all work with Streamyard and all of it, it's been been great. Yeah. So. Also, there's um, you know. Just Kind of making a note that there's a similarity between what you were saying and what Karen was saying of like not being so comfortable being on camera like that was not what you were setting out to do to be the host like we can't all be Zarina <laughs> you know we can't all come in and make everybody cry and move them in that way and so um, it just made me think like are there does anyone else have instances where you kind of were either forced or um, not even forced just like invited or felt safe enough to kind of step out of your comfort zone try something new at philly cam and feel supported like i feel like philly cam can really be you know that kind of improv environment where we yes and each other <laughs> you know like yes and we should do this you know like um uplifting each other's ideas and uh, making sure you feel heard so it's kind of like a question to to anyone who wants to answer it um if there's anything that like you would have never imagined you would have done or tried and um you only were able to do that because of philly cam yeah um because of philly cam and being around you know you wonderful people i did my first live screen and back in 2018 with the first marketing episode and some 60 people showed up mm -hmm. and i learned how to do live screening but i went to other people's live screening. i went to karen walker's live screening um, so I learned from um, how other people put their live screening together. So that was the that was something that I'm like we would never do nothing like that. But I understand why producers and actors and movie studios make sure they have live screenings um, for the audience so they can get those uh, ticket sales early. So that was that was very scary <laughs> and very exciting at the same time. So yeah, it's nice to celebrate your work <laughs> and celebrate it along. The side the people who helped you make it so i'm really glad that you were able to do that it was a great well attended production and for everyone who makes um amazing pieces like that to to have that support um and then i saw i think it was tony your your hand was up as well yeah i just wanted to say that um one of the things that will always stay with me and be in my heart and i think and only philly through philly cam it was um able to happen was to meet Trudy Haynes and become the producer of her show. I produced her show for over four years and I knew I would have never met her and then she became Aunt Trudy. So God rest her soul and to have her as a mentor, to have her as a coach, to have her as a leader, somebody took me by the hand and showed me the ropes. Yeah, we've, we've in the past few years, we've, uh, lost a few really amazing 
Philly Cam members, um, including Miss Trudy. Um, we had Salima, Hakeem Muhammad, and um, Ray Naylor. So it's just uh, it. It's those moments where we can kind of look back and know uh, those moments that we've had with those people, those connections, and that we like. It's it's always kind of a joy to look back and see like their footage too, like to see like how all this this whole life that they've recorded and have um, for us to kind of celebrate and remember them by. Like they're just always here, um, even though we have lost them. And so I'm just like thankful for for those opportunities myself. And so that's what I was thinking of when. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, like it's been a, it's, it's been, it's been a time for a lot of us. So um, just thankful for that. So this is going to show on Philly Cam twice uh, at the beginning of the month in October. If you're watching one of those two, maybe if you're seeing it on TV or you might be watching it online, but it's also going to debut as part of our uh, marathon on community media day, which is a four hour um, spectacle put together by really everybody at Philly Cam, but, but produced by Sergio Galliano, our associate producer at Philly Cam, who's going to pull out all the stops and put to use every space in Philly Cam. Um, and you might actually be watching, and you might already know all about it because you're watching this episode as part of that. We're uh, debuting part of it. So we're going to roll some trivia questions. Um, and if you think you know the answers, um, you're going to be able to send them in here and put a little information on the bottom of the screen. And we're going to pick a winner at the end of it and give away some as yet to be named prize but uh, of our Philly Cam questions, and you get to see the answers if you tune back in. And that's going to be uh, on October 20th, which is Community Media Day. So let's jump into some of our trivia questions here. Uh, and the first one is, what was the name of Philly Cam's resident pet fish? So there you go. There was a Philly Cam pet fish. Uh, what was that fish's name? is going to be really mad if no one knows it. We had yep. two of them. <laughs> we had two pet fish. Oh, I should have changed my. So you, it was just get... like the name and then the name two because oh, okay. it was a big There's... fish and they're very hard to sustain. <laughs> they do gotcha. not want to be alive. It's very hard. <laughs> so you tried not... and Jeff tried. They do tried. not want to be alive. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lots of work. Awesome. Uh, so wacky as that is, I would also like to hear some wacky or wild stories that you might have about Philly Cam. I'll hop in. Um, yeah, so for me, it has to be the 48-hour film project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the first time I was a part of this project with Philly Cam, I thought I was just going to be behind the scenes, like, okay, you know, can I just help out on camera? And then it was mentioned that, oh, yeah, Shamika can play the, the lead role. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> um so, needless to say, my acting wasn't half as good as Gabe's acting in the Jolly Butcher. <laughs> Gabe, I think you did an amazing job with that. Yeah. And then the second time we were in uh, the, the the film project or festival, I was the director of uh, our short film was called, what was it called, Gabe? This What's Next? What's Next, what's yes. Next? I was like, yeah. there's three. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I think I was only on two. Yeah. But anywho, <laughs> I must say, like, we had such a great time just um, utilizing all the spaces in Philly Camp, even like that, that basement area that not a lot of people um, get to see. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was just an awesome experience just working with everyone and just collaborating and, and just making really great content that I feel as though we should have won an award, but it's coming. Yes. It's coming. <laughs> this is such a challenge, making a whole film in, in 40 hours. And with like, we don't know who's showing up, who's doing what, what's going on, what we're going to write. And then just like staying up all night, writing a whole script, find, calling people in favors. Like, can we use your house? <laughs> like, all kinds of things. Um, and yeah, in, including the basement, which is also where we shot Jolly. So <laughs> utilize all the spaces of Philly Cam and work with like new teams. Um, each one is like super exciting. And before we jump to our next crazy stories, I'm actually maybe just quickly can use it as a chance to plug. We have an upcoming um, basically Philly Cam's own version of the 48 hour film festival uh, where we're giving you a little bit more time than 48 hours. Uh, we're calling it our collaborative filmmaking challenge. Um, and basically it's going to still be a compressed time frame, um, but we're going to assign groups. You come to Philly Cam, 
uh, on one day, you plan out your whole movie, figure out what you're going to do. Um, and then you have a second day to, uh, to use any space you want again, like at the 48 Hour Film Festival at Philly Cam. Uh, or you can go out in the community and film. Um, and then a third day to edit. So you get that third day in there, which is nice. And there's it's spread out a little bit. Um, I think it's a Thursday, a Saturday, and a Tuesday. And you can use the in-between time. So not quite as expedited, not quite as, you know, being up till 3 a.m. trying to get a script together. Um, a little less stressful, just a little. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're hoping. Um, and and all Philly cam. So not uh, not having to necessarily, you know, compete uh, the way the 48-hour film festival yeah, is. Yeah, everyone's but, um, a winner. <laughs> That's that's the way to do it. But uh, those films are going to actually debut as part of that uh, marathon that's going on on Community Media Day. So which happens uh, just two days after it, it ends. So you still get to uh, roll out a film in a short span of time and have it turned around and played live on TV. And we're still taking signups. Uh, so just head down over to the website, philicam.org and look up collaborative filmmaking and uh, you'll see that challenge. Um, and we did actually uh, have last year a collaborative filmmaking team that did uh, when they won the Alliance for Community Media Award for Experimental Media. Um, and we've got a short clip, so let's take a quick look. That's right. Massive issues have been discovered in the foundation of the Comcast Tower. Where do people even come up with this misinformation? It looks like the Tower of Doom. How long do we have to wait until the whole building comes down? But first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. It was revealed. Engineers have been covering up massive flaws. Why do people even come up with this misinformation? All right, uh, let's do another trivia question here. Um, and again, uh, if you're tuning in uh, earlier in October on one of the showings here, uh, if you get these answers to us, uh, check down here, then you have a chance to win. Um, and we're going to be debuting those answers live as part of uh, the section of this that's reshowing on our um, Community Media Day Marathon on October 20th. Uh, that should be a good old time. So be sure to tune in for that. Next trivia question here. Where did Philly Cam first open and reside before moving to its current Center City location? Let's be thinking about that. And for those uh, on the panel, if you know, uh, you'd be thinking to hold on to that answer for your chance to win. Yeah, Antoine. <laughs> I was about to ask. I mean, is it fair for me to chime? I want, I'm going to abstain from that one. <laughs> I feel like Antoine, you were uh, ready for a wild Philly Cam story. Is that right? Yeah, I have plenty. Sure, you got uh, a bunch. Course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll refrain from some of the uh, some of the really really way out stuff. <laughs> we'll save that for in person conversations, you know. Um, but actually, one one that I wanted to uh, throw in that that came to mind was when uh, we hosted Democracy Now, and mm -hmm. um, it was live. It was during, the, I think it was a Democratic National Convention. I can't remember what year that was, but Danny Glover was the host. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they went live and um, we actually had some members, Jennifer and Ruby were like floor managers, PAs, they were like helping out. And it got really tense because there were, Amy Goodman was on the air and it was like no Danny Glover. So I guess they were vamping and doing whatever, whatever. And they were getting calls from like, you know, block by block where he was. And they were like, He's on the next block. He's coming <laughs> over. He's on eighth. He's on seventh. You know, he's going to. And so Jennifer and Ruby were like at the door waiting with the to mic him. Basically, they had the oh, wireless wow. pack in the mic. There's footage somewhere, too, of this. Uh, Danny Glover comes in the door and Ruby and they're like threading the mic through his jacket while he's running down the hallway to get <laughs> on democracy. <laughs> so that was um, that was a really fun, fun, memorable uh, moment. And it, it, it went off without a hitch. Everybody was proud of it. And the other really, really cool thing is that after all of that, Danny Glover stuck around and just like held court for probably about an hour. Mm -hmm. He just in, in the lobby and just was like talking to Charles, talking to me, you know, all other members and, uh, you know, staff, everyone. Um, I think we got a picture. Uh, we got pictures somewhere, but yeah, that's um, that that was that was a fun fun moment. <laughs> Tense but fun. Yeah, my mom still shares that picture of me. Okay. <laughs> like yeah, every yeah, yeah. like anyone who will look, like look, my daughter, like 
he's not gonna remember me. Yeah. Um, yes, <laughs> but of all the 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 famous folks we've seen through yeah. um, him, we had Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders even. chilling yeah, out in the garden eating the sandwich. I got to mic him. <laughs> oh, you might. Yeah, that's right. That's it. You did mic Bernie. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ooh, so exciting. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a great story. So speaking of kooky stories here from Philly Cam, and speaking of having to read stuff off the teleprompter, uh, I'm going to do my best to uh, relay one of the stories from uh, Michelle Clark, who submitted this, couldn't be here tonight, but had a story that she knew uh, y'all would want to hear. So um, this is entitled Buzzy the Fly. So as the TV studio crew was filming an episode of Moonstone Poetry, a fly had gotten in. It seemed to want to be in the spotlight, as after the host, Mr. Charles Carr, spoke and turned the conversation to one of his guests, it would land on the speaker's head. <laughs> Since the cameras <laughs> were rolling and her time was short, there was nothing we could do. Despite remaining professional as can be, once in a while a giggle or two would escape us. However, when the filming stopped, the fly disappeared. And as we cleared the set, howls of laughter and jokes erupted like a volcano. We adopted the fly and named him <laughs> Buzzy. Incidentally, at the presidential Biden-Trump debate, Vice President Pence got a visit from a fly which landed on his head. In emails and calls between the crew, we agreed it must be Buzzy. And that he was looking for a better opportunity for celebrity in Washington, D.C. Since you know the debate was a crazy scene, Buzzy got his wish, and he was seen on national TV. We agreed Buzzy should run or fly in the presidential race. And then uh, Shell adds at the end of her piece here, yes, this is a true story with five <laughs> exclamation points. So That's there adorable. you go. I love that they had like that joke afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Let's do one more trivia question here before we wrap up. So here it is. Uh, PCAM staff members Roland and Gabe have worked together to create how many short horror films? And can you, as a bonus, name at least one of them? And uh, uh, what's this? I, I think I'm being told here actually that we have a, a clip for you as a as a hint. So um, producers in my ear are letting me know that. Let's uh, take a look. Chop heads, it's the Jolly Butcher with another amazing unboxing video. So remember to smash that like button and hit the bell so that you get updated on this killer content. We're gonna check out a really cool box from our friend, the Horoscope Killer. All right. God, we wow, got to they should eventually. put that in a lot of film festivals. They should put that in those. I mean, <laughs> tearing it up. Miss Tony J, I feel like, were you thinking, uh, were you next? Well, first of all, I want to thank Karen and I want to thank Earl because if she remembers my first show right before we were getting ready to tape, I had, I never worked with the, what's the, um, when you read the, What's the call? Yeah. yeah. Never worked with that before. And I think I'm not mistaken. I think it was Earl. I could be wrong, but I think it was him who was in charge of that. And Karen produced. It, it was amazing. Right before I was getting ready to go, I had a panic attack. Remember that, Karen? I was. <gasps> I couldn't breathe. I couldn't. Karen, and thank God for Karen. She said, stop. Stop. Just stop. Take a deep breath. I'm like, because I'm, I, I'm, I have stage fright, y'all. I still do to today. And if it wasn't for Karen, I'm telling you, and the staff, I just, and my guests, but I just had a panic attack right before I was, I was going to walk onto the show. And I, every time I think about that and watch the show, and remember at the end, Karen, I went, <laughs> and they had to edit that part out. So that, that my first show, oh my God, it was like, wow. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Earl. <laughs> we are able to encourage each other, um, but yet uh, have so much fear, you know, being in front of the camera and, and doing things out of our, uh, 
just out of our domain, you know. So I enjoyed them. You did fantastic, Earl, didn't she? Yes, she did. Yeah, and look how far you've come. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to say, it's amazing how much that stuff can just fly out of your mind, too. You know, you can be all ready to go. You know exactly what you're saying, what you're doing, and you get in that environment. And I know for me, you know, I see a lot of folks at Philly Cayman, so it can be kind of funny when you've seen, you know, you're behind the camera a lot. I think we could probably all relate to this some. When you're behind the camera, you're like, it's all right. You got this. Don't worry about it. No need to be nervous. Then you get in front of the camera, and you're like, holy what am I doing? Like, <laughs> so it's a, it becomes a whole other, you know, ball game when it's you in front of the camera. But um, one of my uh, best friends growing up, though, his saying was always, uh, if you're not nervous, you're not doing it right, which is kind of just means like, if you care about it and, you know, enough to really like put your whole self out there and put your whole self into it, you're going to be nervous because you're, you're putting your whole self out there. And so it's kind of like, uh, you know, and, and I was, that always helps me a little bit later. It doesn't necessarily help me like in the moment when you're like got the most nerves, you know, he would say that to me and I'd be like, shut up, man. <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it would always help settle me down a little bit later, which is like, you know, we all get a little nervous because it's, it's part of the puzzle, but uh, I appreciate it. Definitely out of body experience for me. I'm sweating out. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I enjoy it. I love talking to people. I love learning and experience experience in the whole process but it's just oh it makes me so nervous but do it scared right do it scared and um enjoy the whole process and know that you have a team to support you it makes all the difference in the world you know yeah, definitely absolutely yeah and i would say every one of like the producers at philly cam is that invested in that passionate and excited about what they do that i would be surprised if anyone wasn't terrified on on in front of or behind yeah. the camera like yeah. you're like oh my gosh this whole thing is like my responsibility no matter what role you're doing and everyone comes in with that same like you know attitude about it like we're, we're making this together. This is ours. Like, and I think that's beautiful and really shows how amazing the, the channel can be and seeing like all the different pieces come together and knowing that like, you have this amazing team behind you, like all of you have, like helped each other and <laughs> return the favor and like keep yeah. creating. And I yeah. think that's beautiful. And I just really appreciate all of you. Yeah, that those transferable skills are so very important because you can understand fully from a different vantage point what it looks what it looks like from behind the camera, you know, or being the host of the show or even being a floor manager, which is just as important. Well, that seems like a uh, a really nice kind of note to end on here. Seems to me anyway. Um, want to thank everybody for coming on with us tonight. Uh, and you know, as we bumble through it here, it's been really great to hear everybody's stories. Uh, just get to see see you all again. Uh, let's just hang out a little bit of a Philly Cam hangout here. It's been so great. So I want to uh, quickly plug uh, for upcoming things at Philly Cam again. We're, uh, this is all part of our People Powered Media Fest. Um, you heard Gabe's, uh, you know, spiel at the top of the hour there about all the different ways you can get involved. But just check out the website, um, and you get all the latest things. Uh, this will be showing uh, again uh, next week if you're watching it the first week of October. If you're watching it the second week of October, you can actually catch it as part of our Community Media Day marathon going on on October 20th. Four straight hours of all kinds of awesome live music. Uh, programming, all that stuff. So be sure to check that out as well. And for those of us, for those of you watching, be sure to check out these programs. Uh, they're amazing. And you will learn and laugh and cry and all kinds of things. Uh, and just now you have a glimpse behind the scenes of who made it and why they care. And that'll make it even more magical. Take a look at this bad boy. So this is from the Horoscope Killer, my friend over the West Coast. Great guy, a little 
weird. I am not sure how he got this through the postage, but uh, he's a wily fella. Some carvings and viscera. All right, what do we got in here? Here's Jolly. You get, you get it? Because it's like the axe from the. Okay. Limbs are like butter with this stuff. Like, oh my God, and this whole box, honestly, you outdid yourself, HK. Because <laughs> I. Hold that thought. I gotta deal with a little guest that I have in the back. Uh, if anyone is out there, please send help. Please tell my mom that I love her and that I'm sorry. And I don't know. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. And, you know, like, while we're here, um, if from a victim's point of view, this, like, really wasn't that bad. Like, this went clean through. I didn't even feel this. I know, right? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if you gotta go, honestly, it's not so bad. I didn't even see it coming. Yeah, that's true. I don't know if you remember, but the guy before us, like, he was going through a butcher knife phase, and it just was a mess. Like, it took forever. Um, this would have looked way different, you know? Hey! Oh, God. Um, okay, I gotta go. I do not suggest using simple ropes to bind your victims, because if you get good ones, which you will, they will get out of them. Chains or bust. But I think that is all that we have for today, unfortunately. But uh, make sure you subscribe to your favorite serial killer, The Jolly Butcher, because I'll have some really cool content coming for you. See you next time, Chopheads. Ugh, it's my uncle. Keeps sending me these weird videos. That's right. Massive issues have been discovered in the foundation of the Comcast Tower, leading some to wonder that the building could come down at any moment. Of course, I predicted this years ago. That's wild. My brother works there. He's gonna think that's hilarious. Where do people even come up with this misinformation? I mean, just look at that building. It doesn't even surprise me, really. It looks like the Tower of Doom. How long do we have to wait until the whole building comes down? But first, a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. Wow, this is big, really big. Send all contacts. OMG, have you seen this article about the Comcast Tower having cracks in the foundation? This story is huge. Maybe we should lead with that on today's show. It was revealed. Engineers have been covering up massive flaws in the Comcast Tower after a, a myriad of tweets are surfaced, even one corresponding with the 76ers organizational account. <laughs> this is gonna be big. Hey, little brother. Are you working at the Comcast Tower today? No, I'm at the property site. Calling because the house we were trying to buy has problems. The home inspector said that the foundation was bad and it failed the inspection. Wow, the foundation was bad? I knew they tried to build that way too quick. Maybe, I mean... That sounds really dangerous. You better get out of there before the whole thing crashes down.
Where do people even come up with this misinformation?